Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So good to see you here at Elon Community Church. It's so good to know that there are others on Facebook Live, and I hope you're greeting one another as you come in and are watching this morning. I hope that you will let us know that you're visiting with us by sending us an email and say, I enjoyed the service or I saw the service. It's so good to be able to know that we're with one another during this time of great separation. Uh, but no matter how you are with us today, we welcome you here and want you to know how important it is that we continue to worship and continue to grow together as a church. Uh, we've really marked a lot of progress in this first month. We are on the road with our budget, with our, uh, all of our uh, committees and boards meeting, with all of the things happening that should be happening as they are. Uh, and we are so proud of that, but now it's a, a time to really get into the year, even in our adapted way. Um, as you probably noticed from the newsletter, and I hope you will all read the torch, it came out just this weekend as we prepare for uh, February, that you will, uh, as you receive it, you will see that there are lots of things going on in February. Uh, begin, beginning Lent is going to be in February. Uh, we're going to have an Ash Wednesday service, a very different kind but it's gonna be an Ash Wednesday service, one that I hope that many of us can take part in. We are going to be having a Lenten series. There's gonna be other things going on, so a lot to look forward to. And if you really have been uncomfortable with, with some of the electronics and some of the uh, technology, we wanna to try to be helpful because it's really important that we work together and, and get involved with these kinds of things. Uh, there is stuff going on today. I want to make sure you were aware of that. Um, at 4.30 today is our kick group, our children's group. So if you're a parent, make sure that your children are able to uh, zoom in on that, uh, on that meeting at 4.30 with Pastor Sharon. And if you have, ever have any questions, we are reachable by telephone. Let us know. We'll make sure that you get an invitation if you didn't see it. It's always in our joys and concerns uh, and we, or in a special emails that go out to our children. So if you're not included for whatever reason, let us know. And then at 6.30 tonight is a special that is open for all of us, and it's been uh, on the uh, Zoom invitation this week. It's uh, Jess Johnson, who is... Uh, a part of the health department and also a member of the church is going to be leading uh, a really kind of a adding to our knowledge base around what's happening right now with COVID and also just some of the basics, some things that sometimes we think we know enough about, but she's going to be able to explain in great detail and answer questions that we have since it's a Zoom meeting unlike this where we can uh, you can talk back uh, in a Zoom meeting. So we hope that you will uh, be a part of that Zoom meeting tonight at 6.30 p.m. And so with all of those things that are going on, we hope that we will continue to grow together. Um, you also note that this last week we had a week of winter faith, and they were incredible meetings. Uh, we have recorded them, and the recordings are now complete because sometimes they have to be edited for certain purposes. And so I will be uh, uh, releasing a, a new one each day on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday so that you will get a chance to, at your own convenience, be able to see, um, to be able to see and, and uh, uh, be able to uh, see what we were able to experience. You won't be able to ask questions, but you'll be able to see how the meeting went and all the questions that were asked and answered. Uh, and they were all very, very good uh, times. They lasted about an hour. So uh, maybe you can do it a one a little bit of each day, but we hope that more and more people will see, and you can also share them once you get them uh, if you'd like to as well. I want to welcome back our Elon students today and our choir, our, our mini adaptive choir, and we're so glad. They're, they're excited. They have their robes on today uh, because we're not in the Community Life Center, so that's going to be kind of exciting. And uh, Joy is back with us, and we're so glad that Joy is here. And, you really uh, entered, uh, helped us to enter into the service today in such a beautiful way. So now, in this spirit of worship and knowing that the Spirit of God is with us, let's, those of you who are here, please stand as we go into our time of worship and with our call to worship. God calls us from boats, from home, around, around the corner. May we respond and follow. Follow in love, share in hope, live as 
as followers of Christ. Love given away is not diminished, but expanded. May our gathering beckon and welcome those near and far to know the love of God. Let's sing. confession. Holy One, what a, what a blessing, blessing and privilege we share here in this sacred space and among us in this loving community. Forgive us our reluctance to open our doors, open our hearts to others, some like us, some not. We repent of our hesitations and unwillingness to witness to those we have considered strangers and even enemies for fear that they just might become friends. The one who calls us to this place calls us to reconciliation through grace. Know that you are forgiven and walk in the new way that is made known to you in God's love. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, our scripture lesson is from the book of Jonah, and it is from the third chapter, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Hear these words. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Through this scripture, God is still speaking, and we are listening. If the children would gather around today, I want to talk to you a little bit about God being a rock. And I brought some rocks here today. I have a really big rock. A really small rock, a really kind of in-between size rock that almost looks a little bit like some broken concrete, and a really smooth rock. Now, what would rocks have anything to do with God? Well, one of our scriptures that we didn't read this morning was from the book of Psalms. 
and is um, from the 62nd chapter in Psalms in verse 7. And if you ever notice, Randy and I, when we pray before we preach, we always say, God, my rock and my salvation. How is God like a rock? Well, think about it. Rocks are everywhere. Is God not everywhere? Rocks are old. Some of them may have been in the ground a long, long time. God is timeless. Rocks are really strong, really strong. I could stand on this rock and it would not move. God is powerful, is strong. Rocks, like I showed you before, come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And God loves everyone. And rocks are useful. And God makes everything work. And rocks are good to stand on. And God is our foundation that we stand on. So God is my strong rock. Can you say that out loud if you're in here or on TV? God is strong. My strong rock. So the next time you see a rock, remember that you're grounded in God. So let's say a prayer about that. God, you are our rock and our salvation and our foundation. And everywhere we go, God, we know that just like the rocks, you're strong and you're there for us and you love us all. Be our rock this week. Amen. And I have rocks now to throw at you, so be careful, okay? Okay, I won't throw it at the TV screen, though. I don't want to break the TV, so. Okay, we're going to go to the Gospel of Mark now. And I don't know if you have found this interesting yet, but whenever we do the Gospel of Mark, you find out how rich chapter 1 is. There's so much that happens in chapter 1 of Mark. We actually read out of, chap, uh, out of Mark for anywhere between four and five weeks at different worship services. There is so much happening. Mark is the, what we call the immediate gospel. Mark has lots to tell us quickly. And there seems to be even more urgency in Mark's language than any of the other gospels. So here now as I read from Mark 1, chapter 14, I'm sorry, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers for men and women. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men and followed him. Thus ends this brief but full reading from the gospel according to Mark. Let us be in prayer. Now, Lord, that the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are really into the season now of the call. We begin with the miracle of the Spirit, and now we're into this time of the call. This is the time of the year when we talk about the call of the disciples, and we equally are called to not only discipleship, but basically to follow. And what does it mean to follow? It means that you also have to repent. 
It means that there's this process, if you will, in which you give up what you have or you give up what you are doing, you give up certain ways, and you turn, and you turn to follow God. Sounds simple enough, but why is it so hard? Why is it made so complex? Why in some theologies have we reduced it to just saying, I believe, and that's all you have to say? where following seems to have an ongoing presence of believing. Following in the way of God gives us a call or a charter, if you will, of how to live our lives or at least how to direct our lives. So why is it so hard? Probably because we have found ourselves all being called from different places in our lives. In fact, many of us can remember stories in our own past in which we remember that time when we first ourselves seemed to accept this as a, as a, as a way of being that was different than we were before. Now, some, of course, have what we call conversion experiences. Usually a conversion experience requires you to be really on another pathway, while others go through what we would call a much more mild conversion experience. In other words, they've been nurtured into the faith. In other words, they've always been raised in the, in the faith. Many of our children that are here were baptized as children, grow up in Sunday school and doing different programs in the church, and they find themselves really just kind of accepting it as they go. And they, some people will say, I never knew a time when I didn't know my faith. But that's what discipleship and the beginning of discipleship is all about. But we have to constantly re- affirm this because there's a sense about following that means you keep following that you don't get led away or led astray like this song that we sang today Jesus calls us or the tumult well we're in the middle of a tumult aren't we we're in the middle of a lot of tumults though this one has been profound but we have been in many even smaller ones, more specific to our own lives, more specific to the, all those things that go on in our lives. As children, we may accept God in a very easy and fun way. We might just feel that love, but as we become teenagers, as we start to grow up, we start to think differently. In fact, we also see that when we start to get a little bit older, we get more educated, we get more of a sense of, of the fullness of the earth, we also get to see the hypocrisies and those things that aren't so consistent. And we start to live a little bit more differently. We start to ask different questions. And sometimes we think when we're asking the questions, we're no longer following in God's way. Couldn't be further from the truth. But that's how many people see it. Because we think if we question, if we ask anything, if we doubt in any way, somehow we've lost our faith. When that actually deepens our faith and gives us the courage to be able to look in some ways that are really important. That's what following God is about. It's about so many times in our life, so many different places, asking ourselves these important questions. Who am I? Who is God? And what am I following? Who am I? Who is God? And what am I following? That can be almost set to anything that we do and be involved in. But most of all, when we find ourselves becoming these people of God who are following along, there's so much more to it. I wish we could just stick back to the stories that we hear in the, the richness of Mark, you know, just this simple question of Peter and Andrew being there and they were fishing and he said, leave your fishing boats and become fishers of people. And they left and they did it. 
or of the Zebedee brothers, James and John, leaving their father and just going. Maybe some of us have stories like that. Some of us have left ways of, or things that we thought we were going to do and changed our very behaviors. For some, it's, it's uh, like maybe addictions, or some it's problems, some it's, it's uh, shortcomings that have gotten in our way. For some, it was career choices. For some, it was the ways that we uh, choose to live our lifestyle. However that works out for you, I want you to be thinking about that right now. But what it is that you follow. And then I start, start to think about what we're dealing with right now. This pandemic. We are in a position right now to see it as an inconvenience or as a war. I don't use the word war lightly. In fact, I don't like to use the word war. But in a sense, we're almost at war. I, I, I think about, even though we've got people in the sanctuary this morning, I think about the newspaper that I read this morning before I came to church about how they found a new case of the more virulent strain in Charlotte. In Me well, they said Mecklenburg County. I'm just assuming Charlotte. And like all things, we know that that is going to come our way, that there's going to be new challenges. Many of you are trying to get vaccines and being frustrated. But this church sits in a very different place than it did. I, I'm just thinking we're coming up on a year. It's just amazing to think, but we're coming up on a year that we've been doing this. It used to be we pastors were reluctant to even cancel church one Sunday. In fact, I know some of my colleagues say, never cancel church. <laughs> well, you can't live that way now. And how we have decided to be a church is incredible, but we've also had to struggle with how to approach it. And this tumult, this large wave, this thing, what is it doing to us in terms of our faith? How is it teaching us? How is it allowing us to be disciples? Well, we have answers, obviously. We have some immediate answers. One of the things that we've done is we've decided to use our building as kind of a mini warehouse, if you will, for meals, for clothing, for goods. We have continued to allow the building to be used in very limited ways as long as it's safe for people to donate blood, for people to be able to do things. I know you, this is going to sound really funny to you, but my, my mother-in-law has been with us, and she likes to watch those older movies. And guess what movie we watched? Gone with the Wind. And the part of the movie that I saw when I walked in was the part in which the, all of the, the patients, the, the, the soldiers who had been wounded, where were they at? They were in a sanctuary of a church. And just as someone was saying something, a cannonball exploded and the window in the front of the church blew out. I've seen other old movies from World War II. You know, we in World War II didn't have to have damage to our sanctuaries. It was a war on another, on another shore. But I imagine what people were doing in those events when they had their buildings blown up by, by bombing, bombing raids that were from uh, both, uh, you know, whether they were on both sides, that there was this sense that there was destruction, that I'm sure that the churches were not being able to be used like they were. I bet that they couldn't even worship the same way. We all think that this is the first time, but this is so indicative of a battle, of something that calls us to do something. And for some reason, and I don't know if it's, I want to just say it's kind of sad that the call to love sometimes isn't as strong as the call to battle. And one of the things that we've seen in the last few weeks, even in our own country, was the sense that it seems that people can be called even to violence. 
when we are actually called to peace. The tumults, the waves are strong. The doubts, the questions, the hypocrisies, the inconsistencies, the things that draw us away sometimes are so simple and so quick. And when people actually look to people who question and say, you are not a person of faith, it makes me truly sad. Jesus didn't call the disciples to battle. He didn't call them to a war. He called them to a movement. He called them to follow above and beyond all of the other things that we're called to follow. And when we're asked who we follow, sadly, we mix it all together. And somehow we think that some of our extreme thinking can be blended with this notion of peace and love that God calls us to, this, this notion of a call that has us maybe leave things that we know but moves into a new place. We have to ask ourselves these questions seriously. Who am I? Who is God? And what will I follow? These aren't just simple Sunday school questions. They are questions of life. And I'm willing to follow a movement that allows people to find their way through this time. And if we have to call it a war, I guess for some people that might need to be, but I'm going to call it a movement. It's a movement of love. It's a movement that helps to shape who we are. Following God is a movement of people to how we will act how we will share, how we will live, and how we will love. And when we remember that, we can see the beauty of what's going on here. And I want to now leave with you one last thing. And that was Pastor Sharon's reading from Jonah. And whether you know this or not, you know that the prophet Jonah, the prophecy of Jonah, is a parable. And when Jonah, remember it says Jonah was called for a second time. Because most of us know how Jonah felt the first time. He was unwilling. He had to spend some time in meditation. And when he realized that he would now follow, he called out to the people to follow. And wouldn't you know it, they did. And God relented. And God said, I will change my mind. If you want to know the rest of the story, you'll know that Jonah was very unhappy about it. Why didn't God destroy him like he said he was supposed to? You see, that's the cynicism that we carry, my friends when we ask these simple but powerful questions, who am I? Who is God? And what do I follow? We must rise above the cynicism. We must rise above all of the things that we think we know and allow God to continue to work in us helping to make us able to leave behind those things that need to be left behind and to love in new and powerful ways, to create justice and hope in communities in all that we do. That's the call. Who do you follow? Who do we follow? And how will we go?
but we need to keep answering those questions. We are the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as we come to joys and concerns, we know that we don't share names openly here because we have them on our computer uh, through the joys and concerns. And I hope that you will pass these words along. But I just want to say, I'm starting to see people acting upon all of the ways we're trying to communicate with one another. Starting to see some people responding to the deacons as they have repeatedly shared those words of saying, you know, if there's anything, let us know. We'll be praying for each other. And people are starting to respond. We have our joys and concerns that we share and we try our best to keep up. We know that it's a difficult process. We keep finding ways to try to reach out to one another. But I call upon all of us to continue to find ways to reach out to one another and to be community. And while we know many of our prayer concerns, there are some that we still don't know, but we're going to continue to pray because we know God knows. And we have our joys each and every week. We have another 300 meals going out the door. We have our backpack program, being able to feed hungry children from our school system. We have Honduras. I don't know if some of you have seen the videos that have come out. We're going to try to get them, uh, just on, not just on Facebook, but get them in a few other places so you can see them if you're not on Facebook. And just to let you know that there are people down in other countries that are saying the word Elon because people cared enough here to bring their clothing and their supplies. And we're raising, thank God, enough money to try to get a ship down there. And there's another shipment, I think, going soon. But we still have a half of a room left. So don't be afraid to give toward helping to ship that down. We're helping to change lives, and those are, those are serious joys. We are going to continue to be community. And so let us go to prayer as a community of faith. To know you, O oh God, is to learn more about ourselves. Who am I? To know you, O oh God, means that we need to study, that we need to love, that we need to look, that we need to discuss, that we need to pray, that we need to grow. And when we ask ourselves what we follow, we must be very serious about how we will look at all of the things we are following. Is it money? Is it power? Is it selfish anxieties? Is it something that cynicism has brought us to? Is it something that we just feel like we just can't believe because someone else didn't do it right? No matter where we find ourselves, oh God, we hear your call to leave our boats. We hear your call to be your people. And I pray that we will continue to grow and struggle in what that means. Even when we think we're already following, what does it mean to follow deep, more deeply, more fully, more gracefully? For the community that comes together and prays together, for a community that cares for its own in so many ways, and for those who are without or outside of our walls that we think about, we're ever mindful and prayerful for these folks as well. For this is a world in need, and we pray now that you will be with all that we have mentioned and all those things that rest on our hearts. And even as we pause in this moment of quiet, let those thoughts, let those feelings run through our hearts even now.
These are the words we share. These are the prayer concerns that we have. And we lift them up now in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we've paused in this service for a time to think about our giving, to reflect upon our giving. Some of us do it at another time, but if you're able to do it now, you'll even see that there's ways of doing it online. There's ways of giving here. There's ways of mailing. There's all kinds of ways because we can share together. And in this moment, let us now receive these blessings and offerings.
us pray. Gracious God, you have called us to follow you. And part of following you is to give what we have so that we may serve others in this church, in this community, in this world. We thank you for these gifts that we have received. Amen. Thanks for being back, choir. It's great to have you. I think they deserve that. And there was one thing I just have to say before we end the service. Hammer and Hank Aaron. I'm sorry, but I'm just a baseball fan, especially him, and uh, we're going to miss him. And now, abandon your small boats. Come and seek other seas. Come and simply follow. Follow in a way that allows us all to be community, one of hope and love and peace. For we pray this now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we do go in that wondrous peace. Amen.